Hey everybody, it's Adam again for today's lesson. Uh, today we're going to go over pre-installation inspection of your gearbox. So we're going to make sure the configuration is correct as far as mounting, the lubrication, uh, the torque arm, bore size, things of that nature to make sure they're, the unit is ready to go on your application before you get it to site and before you go to install it. Okay, so we're out in the shop now. Uh, you just ordered your reducer, you just received it, and we want to double check everything to make sure it'll fit, make sure it'll go into your application correctly. So we're going to go over a few things to check when you first receive your box, so your pre-install checklist, if you will. Um, first couple of things, you want to make sure it's what you ordered, so make sure it's in the correct mounting configuration. Uh, in our catalog, and also tagged to the unit as a QR code to get to the catalog, but in our catalog we have the orientations, the Y1 through Y6. The, the gist of that is Y1 is Y1 and Y3 are horizontal, just left hand and right hand. Y2 and Y4 is vertical, that's whether motor up or motor down. This one particularly is Y2. Um, it, that's just make sure it's what you ordered. You want to make sure it's going to fit your piece of equipment. Um, some other things to check is the couplings. So we, when we don't ship a motor, we ship the couplings half separate. The one half will be installed on the motor input shaft. The other half will be shipped loose so you can mount it to your motor that you're providing. Uh, when you do mount them onto your motor and mount your motor to the unit here, you want to make sure this is set correctly. You don't want it too tight together, but you don't want it too far apart either. So follow the, our, our recommendation per the assembly guide there. Uh, once that's done, you want to make sure you have the right ratio. So it is stamped in multiple locations on the reducer, uh, mainly the ring gear housing here. Uh, right here is an example that's somewhere around the ring gear housing. Uh, you'll find it stamped in the ratio of the cyclo portion, but the nameplate is what you're mainly going to look at. You're going to look at the black, there's a black nameplate on here, and you're going to see what ratio it is. And the best way to check it is you're going to turn your input shaft, input shaft and you're going to count your turns. So if you, if you know you have a 15 to 1 reducer, you're going to turn it 15 times on the input, you'll get one revolution of the output. So that's just a quick, good sanity check uh, when you're checking it to make sure it's going to be at the speed you want it to be. Uh, next, you want to look at the hardware that we've shipped with the unit. So in a bag, uh, attached somewhere to the unit, whether it's a lifting eye uh, or one of the mounting holes, whatever the case may be, there's going to be the bag with the breather in it, as well as, well as, the, as I mentioned before, the QR code with the uh, scannable code to go get all our manuals and such, but it'll be tagged to the box and you can make sure the breather is there. Now you don't need to put the breather in just yet, you want to put the unit on first, especially if we've shipped the unit with oil. Uh, if the breather is on there, you could splash oil around, it could come out the breather and make a big mess. Uh, we want to make sure we have the correct breather, so the breather shown here is the heavy duty breather. Uh, this, the breather shown here is our standard breather. So just make sure the breather is matching what you ordered and your environment as well. So there, there are a few different options. When you're checking your auxiliary components, you want to make sure you have the right fill cup for your application. This one here is, is one that's available. It's a, a cast iron version. We also have a clear version that's a little bit easier to see the oil level from a distance. So again, just make sure you have what we ordered. Um, next up would be checking the oil level. So uh, depending on the orientation, the oil level bullseye gauge will be in different locations. In this particular horizontal, it'll be in this location here. On the vertical, it's on this uh, external sight tube here. Uh, but just make sure you're at the center of the red dot or near the red dot and you'll be covered, there's enough oil. Uh, that's, these were shipped with oil. Uh, if you have to put oil in them, uh, just follow the recommendation per the catalog. Uh, how much oil you put in. So if it says takes, it takes 1.5 gallons, put in 1.5 gallons uh, and it'll come up right to that bullseye gauge. Uh, one of the next things you want to check is your bore. So on these, this particular unit, it's a taper grip bushing unit. Uh, with the bushings, the bore changes here only. The unit doesn't change in the hub, only this bore changes. So you can remove this bushing from the unit and make sure this fits on your uh, applications driven shaft, make sure it fits nice, so that means you have the right uh, bore. Uh, if for whatever reason you need to change the bore, you just swap out a bushing. You don't change the entire unit, just the bushing gets changed uh, to a limit of course, plus or minus, but for the most part you're just going to change the bushing. If it's a shafted unit like this one, you just want to measure the diameter of the shaft or the bore depending on your application and make sure it matches what you ordered, so just a good, good double check. Uh, shrink discs as well, 
shrink test normally would mount out here on the outside of the reducer. That doesn't change based on the customer shaft bore, uh, customer shaft size I should say. So just make sure it's the correct one and it mounts on that outside diameter correctly. So one thing we want to check when you're checking our shaft diameter is you want to make sure the shaft tolerance of the driven shaft. So we'll, we'll go to the, the manual, our manual here and you can see what the tolerances are. So these tolerances are what the driven shaft have to be to ensure a proper shaft fit. If the fit isn't correct, it'll lead to shaft damage, reducer damage, multiple different things. So we want to make sure the shaft fit is correct as well. And with the uh, easy grip option, the shrink disc remains the same as a standard shrink disc unit, but with the easy grip option, you get these two support bushings. Uh, just make sure they fit onto the driven shaft correctly as well, similar to the taper grip bushing. Uh, one other thing you want to check is your shaft rotation. So these two particular units do not have a backstop, so they can freely spin clockwise or counterclockwise. But if you do order a unit with a backstop, you want to make sure the backstop engages the correct, or, correct direction that you want it to engage in. So you're going to come to the input shaft, you're going to turn it the way you want it to go and turn it the opposite way and make sure it stops. So one of those things, if it's not accurate, when you go to put it in, you're going to power it up, it's going to try to power through the backstop and that could cause big problems. So make sure your backstop direction, if there's backstop is equipped, make sure your backstop direction is correct for what you ordered. Okay, and lastly, the one thing you want to check is the auxiliary components, meaning your, your, your safety equipment, your, your coupling guards, so the high speed guards, your low speed guard normally would be here. We have it removed for displaying the taper grip there, but uh, being, making sure you have that for safety reasons, your oil level obviously, your breathers. If you're hooking up any V-belts uh, like our demo rig here, make sure your V-belt guards are all there, your chain guards, your, your equipment safety guards, make sure you have them all intact as well. That safety is very important. All right, that's all for the pre-installation pre checklist, so uh, we'll see you on the next lesson. Okay, that'll be it for today's lesson. Uh, if you have any questions in the meantime before the next lesson, uh, go to sumitomodrive.com and or contact your local Sumitomo rep.